Hi there everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm the GCSE science teacher. In today's video, we're going to be talking about alcohols, esters and carboxylic acids. And this is for students who are studying GCSE chemistry. Although if you are in your A-levels and you've somehow stumbled across this video, hello and welcome. You can use this video as a bit of a recap because this kind of links to some of the organic chemistry stuff you will be learning as well. So please do subscribe if you enjoy this video and like it, share it with someone else too. Let's get started. So alcohols, you may have heard of alcohols in everyday life perhaps if someone is over the age of 18 or 21 they can actually drink an alcohol however alcohols in chemistry kind of encompass a huge variety of molecules and we're going to talk about that today we're going to talk about the chemistry we're going to talk about the functional groups all that good stuff so alcohols are part of a homologous series they're a family of um, substances and they all have the same functional group so they all have an oh group and this is um, a really important thing to recognize in the exam along with the suffix of the names of alcohols so every single alcohol will end in an ol sound so for example we have methanol ethanol propanol butanol those are the first four alcohols that you need to be aware of and you need to know the names and also identify them in their structural formulas. And you can see that we have this here. Just like with alkanes and alkenes, the prefix of the word indicates how many carbons there are. So in the case of methanol, that tells you there's one carbon. Um, if we had propanol, that tells you there's three carbons. Butanol is four and ethanol is two. Um, by the way, if you did miss the video that I did recently on uh, hydrocarbons such as alkanes and alkenes, I'll link the videos for you at the end or in the card somewhere so you don't miss out. But essentially, um, what you need to know for the exams is you need to be aware of the names of the first four um, alcohols and the structural formulas which you can see here. You also need to be aware of the functional groups so you can identify them from other different substances say like an alkene that has a double bond uh, carbon, carbon atom structure. Um, but you also need to know some of the uses as well so we'll go through those. So methanol um, is the first type of alcohol it's just got one carbon in its formula and it's used as a chemical feedstock this just essentially means it's used in industry because it can actually be used um, in other industrial processes um, ethanol is what is found in alcoholic drinks but it can also be used as a fuel it can be used as solvents as well um, in the case of butanol and propanol they also can be used as solvents they can also be used as fuel so there's quite a, a, a vast <laughs> wide variety um, of uses alcohols can have but ethanol is the one that you may have actually used in um, your science lessons you may have actually used ethanol to test for lipids and it will turn cloudy um, ethanol can be used as well to be cl clean surfaces and things like that but essentially ethanol is highly flammable as are all the other types of alcohols which is why they're used as fuels. And one of the chemical reactions that you need to be aware of and know how to write a chemical equation for or a balanced equation for is actually when you do combustion reactions with any of the alcohols. So combustion reactions essentially are just burning a fuel such as the alcohol in a plentiful supply of oxygen if it's complete combustion or if there's not enough oxygen present that would be incomplete combustion and the reaction essentially produces products such as in the case of complete combustion you'd have water vapor you'd also have carbon dioxide but in the case of incomplete combustion you'd have things like carbon monoxide which is really toxic not a very good gas at all um, it's so hazardous because you can't see it you can't smell it very, very uh, difficult to detect just naturally. You'd have to have like a specific device to do that. Um, but you also form carbon particulates as well. So carbon soot, and that can be very damaging to the respiratory system. Um, so if you would like a bit of a recap about combustion, by the way, I did do a video on it. So I'll leave that for you as well. Um, but essentially, that's the key information that you need to know about alcohols.
So the other part of the alcohol content that you need to be aware of is how ethanol is actually produced. So ethanol is produced through a process called fermentation. And if you've watched my previous video on respiration, specifically anaerobic respiration in yeast, you will know that fermentation is a process that scientists have used to produce ethanol. Um, if you haven't watched that, I will link it for you because although it's a biology lesson, it really does link nicely with this chemistry topic. And that's kind of something I would recommend you do is if you can make curriculum links um, through revision, you will actually be able to strengthen your understanding further. So that's kind of a tip for you when you revise. There's a lot of crossover in biology and chemistry specifically, but also in physics as well. So if you can make those links, it does help. Anyway, fermentation is a industrial process that we as scientists have used to create or make ethanol. And essentially what happens is yeast is mixed with a watery, sugary mixture. That sugar acts as the glucose and glucose is broken down into ethanol, which is what we want to get from this process, but also carbon dioxide as well. Now, carbon dioxide is not actually helpful in this process. It can be used for making bread and things like that, which, again, we talked about in that biology video. But the ethanol is what we're most importantly focusing on today. Now, the ethanol is essentially tapped off um, in the process and carbon dioxide is also released to remove it in that process. However, it's really important, the condition you need to know about is as the carbon dioxide is released, no air goes back into the chamber when this reaction is happening. Because if any oxygen gets in, remember this is an anaerobic process, um, essentially the ethanol that's made will react with the oxygen and it will form a product called ethanoic acid, which actually, as the name suggests, it's an acid, it's a weak acid, but also it's vinegar. As we know, it's a scientific name for vinegar and it will make the alcohol taste vinegary, which is obviously not what we want in this process. So it's really important that no oxygen is present. And that's one of the conditions you need to know of. We also need to be aware that lots of sugar needs to be present. So anaerobic respiration can occur um, in a high quantity. So there's lots of ethanol that's produced. We don't want that to be a limiting factor. But also we need to make sure the temperature is optimal. So the best temperature is around 25 to 35 degrees Celsius. And that's because there's lots of enzymes that are working within the yeast cells. Remember they're cells essentially, they're eukaryotic cells, they have enzymes within them. Those enzymes act as biological catalysts to increase the rate of reaction, the reaction being anaerobic respiration or fermentation. So we want to make maintain that optimal temperature. And these are the, some of the key ideas that you need to be aware of. We could increase the temperature, but if we do, it might increase the rate of reaction, but it also could destroy or denature any of those enzymes. So it's a real fine tuning process. It's actually quite a slow process as well. It can take several days to even weeks. But of course, you want to be very meticulous with your method to avoid too much oxygen or any oxygen entering um, and also maintaining that optimal temperature too. Now, just as a bit of a chemistry topic to link to this, um, if you wanted to test for carbon dioxide, just remember you would use lime water and it would turn cloudy in the presence of carbon dioxide. This is not necessarily something you need to know for this process. You wouldn't necessarily test for carbon dioxide, but I thought it'd be a nice link to make just to help you recall that key idea. So for your exam, you need to be aware of the reactions that occur with alcohols with various other reactants. I'm going to run through some of those with you now. I know I mentioned that the only reaction you need to know with alcohols was combustion reactions, but that was the one that you needed to be aware of with the balanced symbol equations. So combustion reactions all have kind of the same products that form. So again, definitely check that video out and I'll link it for you if you are unsure about combustion reactions. But other than that, you need to be aware of how alcohols react with other substances, which I'm going to focus on now, but you don't need to know the balance equations for these ones. You only really need to know what products form and also some tests for some of the products as well. So we'll start off with alcohols reacting with sodium. Now, sodium is a group one metal. Remember, that means that it has one electron in its outer shell and it's highly reactive. Um, 
we actually have to store sodium in oil because of its reactive nature. Um, and when sodium reacts with the alcohol, it will produce hydrogen gas in every case, and it will also produce a sodium alkoxide. And I'm going to talk about that now. So the first one, if we have sodium and methanol, it will produce sodium methoxide and hydrogen gas. The hydrogen gas, by the way, we can test for if we use a lit split. We can place it into a uh, test tube if we collect some of the hydrogen gas in a test tube, pop the lit, lit splint in and it will make a squeaky pop sound. Um, if we had sodium and ethanol, we could get sodium ethoxide and hydrogen, sodium propanol, sodium propoxide and, ox and hydrogen. You can kind of see the, the theme here. Hydrogen gas is always produced, but the sodium alkoxide is also always produced. And we're just using that prefix, that meth, eth, prop and bute that is going in front of the oxide. So just a bit of a tip to help you out there. Okay, so the second type of reaction you need to be aware of is when an alcohol is reacting with water. And this is quite a straightforward one. Again, you don't need to know the balance symbol equation or anything like that for this type of reaction. You simply need to know any observable changes um, and any key ideas uh, from this. So when you have an alcohol such as methanol, propanol or um, ethanol, these are much shorter in chain length and they actually easily mix with the water. Um, however, as you increase the chain length of an alcohol and you get to butanol and you essentially increase further on they get less soluble in water and what happens is butanol will actually form a distinct layer on top of the water and this is linked to things like density as well um, but essentially it will form a, a layer and that's kind of all you need to know at this point so when alcohols react with oxygen, we call this oxidation, and this can happen during combustion reactions, like I mentioned earlier, or it can occur when they react with oxidizing agents. And these are essentially chemicals that give away oxygen to form something else. So when an alcohol reacts with an oxidizing agent, it will always form a carboxylic acid and water. Now, a carboxylic acid is identified by its functional group, and we're going to talk about carboxylic acids in a bit more detail in a moment. But the functional group of a carboxylic acid is this COOH group. And you can see that on the molecules below. Let's have a go at an example to show you what I mean and show you what's happening. So if we take the case of ethanol, which is an alcohol, it reacts with an oxidizing agent. Now, this could be a variety of different substances, but at GCSE, they keep it simple and really only show you the oxygen. Um, and in this case, it's been balanced with a two coefficient. So there's two lots of oxygen that are going to react with the ethanol. Now, when this happens, we form ethanoic acid. Remember, that's the science word for vinegar. But ethanoic acid tells you that it's a carboxylic acid. And as you can see, we've now got the carboxylic acid functional group, the COOH. We also form water as well. And you can see that those water that water molecule is actually formed from the two hydrogens from the ethanol. And we've got the oxygen that has come from the oxidizing agent. One of the oxygens has also formed onto the ethanoic acid as well. So you can see the chemistry of this has now changed. And we're gonna talk more about um, the different carboxylic acids now. So last but not least, let's talk about carboxylic acids. So they are in their own right, a family of structures and they contain hydrogen, carbon and oxygen. They are a homologous series because they have the same general formula. They also have similar chemical properties. They gradually vary in physical properties like boiling point, depending on the chain length and things like this. But essentially the chemistry is the same because of their functional group, which is a CO. O O H group. Um, this has a double bond within it. So one of the carbons or the carbon <laughs> is attached to the oxygen through that double bond. Um, it's a covalent bond because they're non-metals. The functional group, um, you need to be able to identify. You also need to be able to name some of these substances. So the first four that you need to be aware of are methanoic acid, ethanoic acid, propanoic acid, and butanoic acid. And they all have the ending, the same suffix. Um, so anoic acid will be present on all of them. 
But also, if you have a look at it, you can also see the prefix meth, eth, prop, and bute. They are all the same as you would find in alcohols, alkenes, and alkanes. So that makes it quite easy. And that just indicates how many carbons there are. You also need to be aware that they are, as the name would suggest, an acid, but they are weak acids, which mean that they partially dissociate. And I did cover this in a previous video, so I'll link that for you. What you need to be aware about carboxylic acids is they can actually react with alcohols. And when they do, they can actually form something called an ester. Now, an ester is actually something that has a really nice scent to it. So it's found in a lot of perfumes. It's found in aftershaves and things like that that have a really sweet, nice smell. Um, the functional group of an ester is very similar to carboxylic acids, but instead there is no H. So it's just C double O. And um, one thing you need to be aware of is how these form. So when you have the alcohol and the carboxylic acid, you form your ester and water as well. Now, the key ester that you should be aware of at GCSE that they want you to know is one called ethyl ethanoate. You don't necessarily need to know the other types of esters. They only really want you to focus on this one. So you need to know that when ethanol, the alcohol, reacts with ethanoic acid, it forms the ester ethyl ethanoate and water. Naming the other esters is not required at this point. But feel free if you want to name the others and you want to have a go, comment down below and I'll let you know if you're correct. Thank you so much for your time today. I've been the GCSE science teacher and you have been curious. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a big thumbs up, share it with someone else so they don't miss out on key revision and also do subscribe. We are almost at 60 subscribers here on my channel. I cannot believe it. I would love us to get to 100. That'd be amazing. So if you know of anyone who is wanting to revise GCSE science or maybe they don't want to revise, but they need to and you know they need to, do share my channel with them to help them out. They are very welcome to join this community have a fantastic day and I will catch you in the